Hey guys, welcome to yet another video. Uh, today we have with us Sunil. Uh, he is uh, uh, he recently cracked Goldman Sachs for so he also has a D show offer from Luxembourg. He has cracked multiple companies. He, he'll tell you about that in his intro. And first of all, Sunil, congratulations for that. And it's a really it's a really big feat and uh, to get into these uh, so many companies with which have a uh, so uh, like. A hard interview. So first of all, congratulations on that. And if you want to introduce yourself to our audience, please go ahead. Uh, so first of all, thank you, Jovan, for having me on the platform. So my name is Sanyul Hussain. I am from a tier three college in Kolkata. It's uh, Netaji Shubhash Engineering College. It's growing quite a lot now. So uh, basically, uh, talking about my educational background, I was not into computer science. Uh, I did uh, learn Java in my 10th because that was compulsory of my ICSC board. But after that, in 11th and 12th, I studied biology because I was a neat aspirant and mm -hmm. I was not into engineering. So basically, uh, like after preparation of two years in Akash, I gave the uh, neat exam. And unfortunately, I couldn't get a government college. I had to uh, transfer to foreign locations for that. Mm -hmm. So uh, I finally opted for uh, the West Bengal uh, JE. It's uh, the state level examination. And then mm. I got a government college as well as a private college. So the government college was uh, giving me uh, IT information technology and the private college was giving me computer science engineering. So mm. I had this notion that uh, there might be difference in IT and computer science engineering. Mm. Uh, mm. The exposure might be better in computer science. So basically I, I opted for a private college uh, rather than a government college. So uh, the first year of engineering, it was quite like I was again preparing for need. I didn't uh, opt to drop out because dropping out needs a lot of courage and you have yeah. to stay dedicated throughout the year. So I opted for engineering and I prepared again for need. I had the 75% attendance bar in my college. So I had mm. to cover up that as well, but uh, didn't secure such uh, high marks, high GPAs in college exams. But this time I cracked uh, the need exam. I got a government college, like it was uh, two, three kilometers just away from my house. Mm. And uh, it was like providing the best of the facilities. But mm. again, due to some administrative issues and due to some decision flaws, I couldn't claim my set and I had no options but to continue engineering. Oh. So that's how it all started. <laughs> nice, nice. I think uh, it's rightly said, like uh, destiny is already written for all of us. So if you are bound to get into... Uh, a certain line so you will end up there any, anyways so exactly. again congratulations on your like uh, the the achievement is very big so uh, just to uh, talk about the so process I of d show luxembourg so if you can talk about uh, how you cracked it how you approached the interviews what was the first of all the application procedure and uh, what interview rounds were there if you can briefly touch upon these topics okay so uh, talking about Disha, uh, there are several offices. I think there are 17 locations all around the world. Okay. So uh, I first of all tried for Hyderabad location. I took a referral mm -hmm. from a former intern and uh, he actually liked my profile and he gave me the referral. And uh, I was expecting an online assignment link, but I did not get one. So thought of trying for the European regions. So uh, in Europe, uh, I saw there was an opening for the Luxembourg location and I opted for that uh, directly without uh, any referral because I did not have any connection there. And also there was this notion that uh, a employee sitting in Hyderabad cannot refer me for a location uh, around other parts of the world. So I had this notion as well. So I did not opt for a referral. But fortunately, this time I got the application that is the uh, online assignment link. And uh, it was uh, not that hard, to be honest. Like, uh, if you consider uh, the application process, the online assignment of Uber, it's quite par, but the questions are standard. And uh, actually, DShaw does not recycle questions. They put mm. on new questions in the online assignment, uh, unlike other companies. Mm. So basically, uh, the online assignment is the hardest part of the mm. entire recruiting process. Okay. After that, when you get the interview, it's quite standard. Like you will mm. get standard question, you will get standard lead code questions, the hard levels. So basically after the online assignment was over, uh, I got a call for the hire view round. So basically uh, many don't know what is a hire view round. It's uh, basically a set of pre-recorded behavioral questions 
and mm. an online uh, it's like uh, an artificial intelligence judges you based on your body language your mm. eye contact your uh, language tone and they mark you some points out of 10 if you perform well then your recorded videos will be transferred over to real interviewers and then they will call you for the on site interviews so mm. this is the basic process and then uh, the on site interview it's called the super day assessment and you get uh, like continuous 3 hours of interviews so there are two technical rounds and finally one hiring manager round so uh, talking about difficulty of questions uh, as i said basic lead code standard questions lead code hard i would say and uh, in my case all the questions majority of the questions i got through the entire recruiting process was mm. based on dynamic programming one single question i got from binary search so yeah disha loves dp like if you are applying for international offers so uh, yeah that's the entire procedure and in the hiring manager round you should keep focus on all the behavioral competencies and principles of the company uh, mm. you should frame your stories around all those competencies and that should be good yeah great great really nice and uh, and during the how many days this uh, interview process took place like it was only one day or like a week okay so uh, it's like the entire process might take uh, two long months like starting mm. from the online assessment to the last uh, super day assessment it might take two long months and uh, luckily i got the offer on the very same day as my interview so okay. my interview was from uh, 3 to 6 pm mm. and i got the offer around 8:30 or 9 pm in the night so yeah nice. that that was like super amazing for me really nice really nice and uh, moving on to the, your other offer international offer of goldman sachs for so and if you can similarly explain a bit about the process yeah. there so uh, so uh, regarding goldman uh, the application process is quite similar you get an online assessment again so uh, this time i applied for three positions one was for bangalore one was for new york and one was for the warsaw location hmm. so i got a link for bangalore hmm. i also got a link for the warsaw location so uh, the bangalore link i didn't know why i did not get reported back by the interviewer so it was it was like uh, i had to uh, sit for three long hours Three hmm. long hours or two two and a half long hours, uh, as I could remember. So it was a basic uh, computer science plus mathematical uh, set of questions. Hmm. Uh, you get one hour of aptitude and one and a half hours of data structures and algorithm questions in the Bangalore hmm. office. And for the Warsaw location, the complete uh, interview process was different. So I got uh, two questions for sixty minutes. The online assessment it was. and after that as i said if you are applying for international offers you will have to go through a higher view round because they want to assess you on your behavioral competencies how mm. you actually are if you are culturally fit for that company so mm. yeah after the online assessment there was higher view and then finally a set of two interviews and each interview panel had two interviewers each so uh, yeah they will uh, they are from different domains from different departments and they will ask question based on their expertise so you mm. have to be pretty prepared for that and one more thing which i liked about goldman was so was uh, they asked me dsa questions like they asked me uh, standard questions but they did they did not ask me to code anything it was mm. like uh, a face to face interview and they were uh, actually asking me what is the what is your thought process why mm. are you uh, saying that this would be the perfect solution for this code prove that mm. so mm. they are more focused on the logic logical reasoning part than the coding part so yeah i think that that's very important and uh, for the moving further you will be asked some mathematical questions as well like mm. some questions on probability and all those mm. stuffs and finally they will grill you on projects and behavioral questions like i was asked around 10 to 12 behavioral questions throughout the entire interview so you can mm. imagine like how much mm. focus they put on those rounds so yeah okay okay really great so uh, sunil if you can uh, briefly explain about what kind of behavioral questions were there so like okay. and how you can prepare for them if you if you can prepare for them okay so uh, talking about the very first behavioral question it's uh, introduce yourself so it's a mm. very common question which everyone asks you now yeah. what people do wrong is i think that they actually replicate everything from their resume like whatever they have put on their resume they replicate yeah. everything in the in the answer but i personally think you should uh, actually focus on 
uh, what changes or what extra or what unique things you can bring to that particular company. You should mm -hmm. be saying about that as well. Why are you interested in joining that company? And also you can tell about your past experience. If you had done internships, what was your past experience with your earlier manager or former manager? So mm -hmm. yeah, you can include all these things to make your answer unique. So this is a very first question. And uh, regarding other questions, like there were questions like why you want to join Goldman Sachs. Then mm. uh, there were questions like uh, if you have a deadline in two days and you do not have enough resources, how mm. will you manage? Like how mm. will you uh, carry out the process? And then there were questions like if you have uh, uh, if you have to deliver a project in a long run, then how will you uh, make sure that you are sticking to the entire procedure and do not divert? So this mm. were the kind of questions they asked generally. And you have to frame the answers based on those principles, which the company values. So, yeah. Really great. Really great. And uh, do you think like somebody can prepare uh, for behavior questions uh, beforehand or it's all about like being on the flow? Okay. So uh, uh, during my Google interviews, uh, I was uh, the, doing the same thing. Like I prepared mm -hmm. the answers on spot and it was the biggest mistake I did. Okay. Because, you know, uh, on-spot rounds, like on-spot answers, you might be telling anything. Like, you don't mm. know. You don't have control on your, like, uh, you exactly. know, uh, control on what you are saying. Like, you mm. might say something which not, might, which wouldn't go your way at the very end of the interview. And you might exactly. get rejected. So, it's mm. better to prepare beforehand the question, the questions and the answers. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. And you mentioned, like, there were some topics about probability and some mathematics yes. topics. So, do you think you should prepare beforehand for that as well or basic probability that we, uh, that we learn in our plus one plus two is sufficient? Okay, so uh, it's like, you know, uh, if you do not have a previous grip over those mm. subjects, you can definitely tell them that I do not have the knowledge currently, but mm. I can learn those things in a smaller period of time if I am given a chance. So mm. it's the exact answer you should be given when you don't know an answer. Hmm. So, uh, basically I didn't, uh, was, I, I was not much into probability. Hmm. So, uh, I told them directly and what they did was they walked me through every part of the question. Like hmm. they walked me through each component of the question so that yeah. I can figure out the solution myself. So this was okay. a very amazing part from their side as well. So, yeah. Okay. So then it, it comes out to be a basic logic building question rather than a pure yes. probability question. Yes. Yes. Exactly. Uh, exactly. Makes sense. Makes sense. And uh, I know, like, as you said, like, uh, you have practiced a lot uh, of DS, uh, practice a lot of DSC questions. So uh, this is a very common question students have is like how to effectively use lead code. First of all, like how to even start using lead code or similar websites for DSA preparation. So if you can share your opinion on that. Okay. So, uh, you know, uh... Whenever we start, we uh, always think like what algorithm we should focus on. Like there are several kinds of algorithms. If you see there is recursion, there is backtracking, there is dynamic programming. And mm -hmm. again, there are some recursive functions which are used in some questions of trees, right? So people don't know what should be the actual sequence of mm -hmm. learning. So uh, first of all, you should be listing down all the algorithms you should know and list them in sequence such that you do not suffer at the very end of the process. Like if you are doing dynamic programming before recursion, that's very vague. You won't understand anything. So yeah. uh, that is the thing. And uh, uh, second thing is like uh, practice algorithm as much as you can. Uh, uh, try to implement them on examples using a paper and a pen. That mm. would actually help you to know what is the trade-off of, of that particular uh, algorithm. What is the advantage? Why it is being used? And you can uh, derive variations of that algorithm on your own. And that will actually help you to answer questions, similar questions related to that algorithm. So that should be the very procedure one should be learning. And mm. uh, regarding lead code questions, if you know the algorithms, you can like, it would be a cakewalk for you. So mm. yeah. Okay, nice. And do you think like lead code is sufficient and should should students go for competitive programming and should should they invest their time there as well or you think lead code uh, should be their one source of truth? Okay, so uh, you know competitive programming, there is so much hype of competitive programming. That is, if you don't do competitive programming, you won't get in there. That's that's perfectly not true. Uh, 
competitive programming actually helps you to train your brain to sharpen your skills and mm. also helps you to you know uh, answer questions in un, uh, like in some time constraints so that mm. is very helpful but it's not mandatory it's not compulsory if you do lead code that could be enough uh, i would personally suggest you to go and visit the discuss section of lead code there will be mm. several interview questions interview experiences visit them uh, start focusing on the newest uh threads they will mm. actually help you to know what is the current standard of questions being asked on those companies so yeah mm. okay nice and as you uh, as you are still in college and uh you must have applied using your resume only so your resume is the one 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 source of truth that in the in your interviews must have to uh take a look on so what do you think like how a college student should frame their resume like should be focused on your on their lead code ranking or it should be focused on their projects how should uh, a college student lay out their resume okay so uh, you shouldn't make a generic resume your resume should be specific according to the company you are applying for suppose mm. if i say you are applying for google google will definitely focus on your competitive programming handles or your mm. uh, you know lead code handles or your ranks in particular competitive programming contest but if you are applying for suppose browser stack or maybe atlassian mm. they, they will focus more on your projects part if you have done open source projects or not if you are applying for meta they will focus a lot on your open source projects so mm. it basically varies from company to company so i would say don't make a generic resume and uh, the, which you can uh, like uh, apply with uh, for every company that won't help you start making resume uh, specific to the company you are applying for and one more thing is like uh, look into their job descriptions because there will be some keywords which you have to put in your in your resume so that the matching is mm. uh, matching percentage is higher because yeah. you know there will be 20000 or more applicants for that particular job opening and there might be 5000 referrals so you are also in the same queue so if mm. you are making sure that the matching percentage is higher your resume will be uh placed at the top of the queue rather than at the bottom of the queue and the exposure yeah. might be different you might get viewed by the recruiter so yeah exactly exactly like i think this is a very nice advice and uh moving on to uh one of the topics like you also have some freelancing experience and i see yes. a student asking this question a lot like how to start uh doing freelancing or how to like go, get into open source so if you can share your opinion on that as well okay so uh you know uh, i started freelancing because i had to learn web development <laughs> so it's it's one of the most <laughs> interesting reasons i have for freelancing so my brother is a freelancer and uh, i actually heard him talking on calls like uh, i will be completing this gig and you have to pay me 20000 30000 like this mm. amount so, so i was i was very surprised like what is what is he taking this money for like <laughs> is it for something very huge so then mm. i asked him and he said like uh we are making one single website and we are getting paid 20000 or 30000 amount from the client so i was like mm. one single website and you are getting this much amount so mm. that that should be very interesting and i started like taking interest in freelancing from that time but to be very honest at the starting of at the starting phase it was very difficult uh, because i was not getting any client and i was wasting a lot of time spending on their platforms mm. uh, like uh, making a bid and then getting in contact with a client so it was very dif difficult at very first but luckily uh, there was this platform called uh, gigzo it was formerly known as wiz council so they okay. started at that time and they then they called uh, the technical experts so uh, there were around 200 technical experts and the demand of the projects was huge like the demand was huge and supply was less so mm. we were getting clients and that actually helped me to make a connection in india as well as abroad so i had this connection across hanover from germany then mm. california and then uk so yeah there was this uh, there was this moment as well like i was getting direct calls from uh, people in germany that they want to make a website from me so that nice. that feeling was amazing and uh, regarding uh, revenue uh, it might be very less at the very first of the first phase that is it can be 10000 20000 per month but as soon as you make a network as soon as you build a chain of freelancing it can rise as high as 4 lakhs per month and mm. also it can rise as high as 30 lakhs per month as well if you are mm. making a chain and you are outsourcing the projects so yeah 
really great really great i think this is very inspiring so uh, at the last i would say like any any last few words and or any tips for dsc preparation or for interview preparation for students who are like appearing in interviews in upcoming days okay so uh, the very first thing i would like to say is make sure that your health is okay because uh, i had faced many interviews before the interviews my heart rate was like uh, very fast it was beating very fast and i was mm. fully nervous and i was sweating all around and uh, that actually uh, had a negative impact on my performance as well so make sure you you are healthy may do a body check up first and then offer this interview that would be very like uh, that would actually help you grow and uh, second thing is as i said you have to make a resume specific to the company uh, try putting keywords from the job description that will actually help you get the visibility third thing is practice algorithms focus more on algorithms rather than solving questions because it's very important you know what is the trade off of that algorithm why is that algorithm uh, best for that particular question so yeah you should focus on algorithms and last thing is if you are doing a project make sure that it's unique don't just copy it from the internet because the interviewer might grill you and you might not be able to answer all the questions and that would make a very bad impression and you might uh, not get the offer so basically try owning the entire project it can have a user base of 5 or 10 or 30 and that would be actually great like that would actually um, make uh, like generate interest in the interviewer as well like your project is getting a user base so yeah uh, all these things should you should make sure and also try giving mock interviews and uh, for regarding mock interviews uh, i i actually did not uh, give any mock interviews but i usually take mock interviews and that actually helped me like assess uh, if a solution is right or wrong in real time like mm. i get to know like i might be knowing a solution but uh, what the interviewee is giving like what yeah. solution the interviewee is giving that might be different from my solution that might be different from what i know so that actually helps me to assess and to sharpen my problem solving skills as well so yeah you can do that as well really nice so near really nice and if you can ask you like i i know uh, you have a long list of offers that you have cracked and if you can just tell me the number like how many you have actually cracked <laughs> uh currently currently it's uh, eight offers uh, nice. among them two is international and six is national offers yeah really great really great. first of all congratulations again and thank you so much yeah and i i would say like uh, just uh, don't look on the offers you have cracked i think we must have faced some rejections as well so that is part of the process and yes. uh, no student should get uh, disheartened by the rejections that is part of the process and if you give like 10 20 interviews there might be a case like you were rejected from half of them but that's okay exactly. and this is the part of your uh, college journey that you can experiment with the uh, with the all the different kind of projects and you can also like there is a big debate of dsa and dsa versus uh, competitive programming versus yeah. uh, development so you can try all these all the things that you want to try and then you can figure out your path so uh, thanks again sunil for coming to our channel and uh, hope we will see you again in, a, in a, on a different uh, topic and thanks again thank you so much thanks